So here we have it again, differentiated with respect to x, and we're doing part c again. Now the idea of doing part c again, when you do past papers, let's remember what you're really doing. You're revising for an examination. And if you're revising for an examination, you want to consider the different methods that are available to you. In the exam, the examiner won't mind which way you do it, as long as your method is clear and your working out can be understood. And obviously arrives at the correct answer. So let's look at this again. Start by rewriting the question. If I put a bracket round there, we can consider that as being raised to the power of 1. So we can write that as 4x raised to the power of minus 1 multiplied by the sine of 4x cubed. Now we can consider letting u equal the first part and v equal the second part. And instead of using the quotient rule, as we did with our first effort, we can now use the product rule. The product rule is that dv, sorry, dy dx equals u dv dx plus v du dx, making our v's very prominently v's and our u's very definitely u's. So we need to differentiate both of these with respect to x. Differentiating this with respect to x, you get du dx equals, minus 1 comes down there, inside the bracket stays the same, drop that by 1 power, and then multiply by the inside the brackets differentiated. In other words, differentiating the 4x getting you a 4. Differentiating this with respect to x gives you dv dx equals sine differentiated is cosine. So we get the cosine of 4x cubed and we multiply by the 4x cubed differentiated. 3 fourths 12. Drop that by 1 power. So let's put this information into here. U. That was this bit here. Multiply by dv dx, which was this here. We'll put the 12 at the front, I think. So that's that part there. And let's move on to this. Plus v multiplied by du dx, which is this. Let's tidy that up. That would be a minus. We'll put that at the front there, I think. 4. And this we could put back down the bottom as that. OK, so we've got the minus there. We've got multiplied by 4, and we put that back down there. Right, let's tidy this up. Well, not a lot we can do. We can put that like that. And put that underneath. This we've already done, other than putting that at the front, which is a bit neater, isn't it? All squared. So that's actually 16, isn't it? So there's our answer, this method. Let's look at our answer from the previous method. And it's exactly the same answer. Let's just look at it. If I multiply the bottom and the top of this by 4, that would become 48. And that would become 16. Multiply the bottom of the top by 4x squared would turn that into a cube and turn that into a squared. So now you can see that is exactly the same answer as that. Now of course in the exam you wouldn't change this answer, you'd leave it like that, the examiner would accept it. This actually illustrates something else. The correct answer can be presented different ways. The examiner has got 
a marking scheme with the answers on it. But it is possible, it is possible, you could do a calculation or a question and be absolutely correct in your working out, spot on perfect, and end up with an answer that the examiner hasn't got on his answer sheet. That is quite possible. You may not believe it, but it is. So what's that then? Well, the examiner has to work through yours to see if in fact it is the same answer. And that's another reason why you must show your working out. You must show your working out to show how you have arrived at your answer for the examiner to check through to see if in fact your answer is acceptable. If your method is right, if your method is mathematical, it will be acceptable, as long as it's clear. Right, well that's question number one done. Now that was question number one, just part C, from an exam paper. Practice paper three, from www.mathtutor.biz. That was question one. Part C. If you want to see the rest of question one, or if in fact you want to see the rest of the exam paper, and work through the exam paper, and watch the DVD with all of the results and all the explanations and all the solutions and all the marking schemes on, then you'll need this set of DVDs. So if you go to www.mathstutor.biz you'll be able to see all the relevant material is available to buy. Call 3 this was set 1 paper 3 just one solution. You want the rest? Then visit my website. I hope to hear from you.